Howdy y'all, today we've got a video that we're going to cover the Serenity Pot system. This is the new housing system in 1.5. I wanted to make a video that broke down all the ins and outs of the new system and how to navigate it, as well as some tips and tricks uh, that I've learned along the way that I think everybody should know. So first off, we'll cover how to get inside the pot. You're gonna first have to do the quest line. That quest line, honestly, I don't remember the name of the quest but it'll be the first quest that you see when you log on uh, in 1.5. Uh, once you've done the quest, you'll have an item in your inventory, the Serenity Pot. You use this to enter your world, and the tutorial after you finish will kind of guide you through this first process. First process. Once you enter, your world's not gonna be furnished like mine is, but uh, you will have Tubby and the game will you know, direct you to talking to Tubby. This is going to be your main go-to guy for most of your Serenity Teapot stuff. Uh, you're going to craft with him and all kinds of things. So you're going to craft, you're going to purchase his things. Anywho, after you've done the tutorial, you'll have access to his normal menu. Um, first off, we'll cover the trust rank. Okay, so this is kind of like your, your reputation or your adventure rank for this whole system, right? This is something that you'll generate over time. Um, and most of your trust, which is this little blue icon, will come from crafting new items. Uh, crafting items for the first time. And you only get it when you craft them the first time. And then uh, in order to collect the realm currency, which is this silver coin here, uh, this is something that took me a little bit to figure out myself. But this gold pot down here will fill up with coins and it'll tell you a number. Uh, if you click on it, you'll collect all of your accumulated uh, realm currency, right? So whenever you've got your realm currency here, be sure to collect it because you have a max amount that it'll hold. Like right now, mine is 900. And then I also earn 16 per hour. So you can gen you can calculate, you know, how long it'll take for your storage capacity to fill. Anywho, that's the trust and the um, realm currency system. And that's how that all works. Then you've got Maybe. the Create furnishing. This is where you go to craft new furniture, okay? There's two sides, well, actually there's more than two sides to this. Uh, over here at the top, we'll cover this first. There's a little potion icon. If you come here, well, I guess you could call it dye, right? This is where you craft your dyes and your fabric. These are items that you'll need in a lot of different recipes or furnish furnishing recipes or blueprints. Um, so it's a good idea to craft a bunch of these when you start off. I recommend when it comes to these that you only use the easy to get items. Like for the blue, I recommend using the mint, not the wolf hooks. For the yellow, I recommend using the berries, not the core lapis. And for the red, I definitely recommend using uh, carrots and um, sunsetias and not the valberries. Just because, you know, those are much more time gated than the other two. When it comes to fabric, unfortunately, the only thing that you can use is silk flowers. Um, You'll find these over by uh, Chingse Village and over in um, Liwei Harbor. Those are the only locations you can really find them. Uh, they're pretty easy to spot. It's a red bushel. I'll, maybe I'll show that here in a little bit whenever we go out to the world and start gathering some wood, which is another thing I'll cover. Um, when it comes to furnishings, you're going to want to craft the things that have these little blue symbols in the corner first. Okay. Always focus on those, craft all of those at least once. Once you've crafted it once, that little blue symbol will disappear, letting you know that you've already crafted this item. Uh, unfortunately, you can't filter by things that you haven't crafted, and you can't organize by things that you haven't crafted or their rarity. It's just kind of a flaw to the system. Uh, once you've put things into the crafting queue, you'll notice that it'll tell you, you know, how much time you have remaining. Also, right underneath the bar, it'll tell you either speed up time remaining or it'll tell you that you've already sped up, something along those lines. Now, as far as speeding up things, this is where having friends comes in handy. You're gonna want to ask your friends to come, by, to, come to your world and speed up your items. And I'll show how to do that here in a moment. But first, if you want people to join your world, you're gonna need to open up the map while inside your Serena teapot. And you're gonna wanna click this icon up here at the top. If you click that, you'll notice this big box here It'll tell you who's in your world if you have somebody in your world. And then down at the bottom, this little white bubble here, you're going to want to change this from, uh, I think it starts off with like join after approval. Go ahead and change this to allow direct join. This is just going to mean that people can join your world without uh, pestering you to enter. 
Um, unless you're worried about them purchasing out your chubby inventory. This is another vendor. He comes on Friday, and he stays from Friday, Saturday, Sunday, and I think he goes away like Monday morning. But he's a weekend vendor. He only sells items that, uh, he only sells items that are placeable. He doesn't sell any blueprints as far as I've seen, but every player has a different inventory with their chubby. All right. Uh, another thing I need to say, I can't really show because I don't have any, but there are um, placeables that are floorings and wall uh, changes. Those items, um, when you first craft those, it'll give you the trust rank, which is fine. However, using those items right off the right off the bat won't really up your adeptal energy gain, which I need to cover that. Um, but placing those, all it does is swap out, so it doesn't really count towards building up your adeptal energy, which I need to cover that after this. But so chubby. This guy shows up on Friday, and he stays all weekend. He's got unique inventory per player, and he sells things using that realm currency we covered earlier. As you can see, the forest boar has already been purchased. It shows a sold out. That means that somebody already purchased the max amount. Now, this, this is for everyone. So if you go to somebody's world and you purchase something, it'll use up the, the stock that that vendor has, and if, it, and if you buy it, buy it out, then nobody else will be able to purchase that item. So that is something to keep in mind. Don't be too greedy, guys. Don't steal your friend's, you know, unique and cool items. <clears throat> unless you make sure it's okay with them first. Because it could be it, it could be pretty rude, you know? Yeah. Now let's cover the, uh... Adeptal Energy. This is no what you... Lose. What your total, like, points worth is in your... Since, uh, in your teapot, okay? And this builds as you place items, right? And in order to see this, you'll show it in your... No, yeah, you'll show it in your trust rank. It'll tell you right there what your adeptal energy is. This is the total amount of the little, you know, uh, tubby. It's little tubby's face there. That symbol is next to any time it covers adeptal energy. So when you place something in your world using this, uh, this hand here, whenever you place stuff, it's going to generate a certain amount of energy over time, right? So like here, I just took back one of my little rocks. These, this is going to add 20 to my total adeptal energy. So this means that you want to make sure and you place everything you own. Just go through each and every tab and click every button and make sure that you place everything you own. This will add to your total adeptal energy. Now, keep in mind, there's two different sides to the adeptal energy. You have an outside a total amount of adeptal energy and then an inside amount of adeptal energy, okay? I'll cover the inside here in just a moment, but just make sure that you place everything that you own uh, Everything that you buy after you buy it come and place it something else to note is Sets now if you go to the last tab on either inside or outside there's gonna be sets now crafting these is somewhat important It's not huge, but it does help. Okay, if you look at like this set for example, if you have everything that is required in this in this list and you place it as a set, which I'll show how to do that here in a moment, you're going to get an additional 10% adeptal energy. So this set right here is all the total items added up will be 390 normally if you place them separately, but if you place the set, it's going to give you an additional 39, which is 10%. So keep in mind that if you have everything required in a set that maybe you should place it as a set for that additional 10%. Doesn't hurt, right? It does take some time though. So I'm gonna cover an inside set real quick. We're gonna go inside our mansion and I'm gonna pull up a set I already did because this is the easiest way to do it. But in order to place a set, you have to have all the items of a set unplaced. Hopefully that makes sense. I'm gonna show you here. We're gonna pull up this, uh, this table set I already made. I'm gonna take it. Or not. What just happened? Oh, no, wait. Oops. I gotta take it all separate now. Alright. So now when I go to indoor set, you'll see that it's instead of it being grayed out, it's actually gonna be highlighted. It, well, lit up, I guess. And if I click on that, it'll allow me to place the whole set all at once. And I can move the set and tilt the set like it was just one item. Now, you still can move things. 
Mm, I guess I have to place it first or confirm it first, and then you can move things inside the set and pick things up still as a set, but regardless. In order to place a set, everything needs to be unplaced. As you saw, I had the four chairs in my inventory, the table in my inventory, and the candle in my inventory. Therefore, I was able to place the set as a set. And now that I've placed it, it's no longer lit up because I don't have the items to place another set worth. Um, so make sure uh, to check your listings and, and see. A good and easy way to do this, I'm not going to do it right now because then I have to replace everything, is to actually go here into the little cogwheel in the top, right? There's a little cogwheel in your, when you're in the menu to set things. And then you click this button, and retrieve furnishings in area. This is gonna pull up everything you own. This is gonna pick up everything you own and you're gonna have to replace everything. However, doing this will allow you to see, you know, what sets you've completed with what you own currently. So if you've got the time, maybe it's a good idea to retrieve all your furnishings and then replace things as sets first. All right, so that should cover how you place things um, in the Adeptal Energy System. Now, um, as far as helping a friend, let's show you guys how you can help a friend, right? Yeah. So let's say you've done everything you can do for the day. You're waiting on your stuff to, you know, finish crafting. Um, and your friend of yours has asked you, oh, hey, I need a boost. Okay, so you'll go to your friend's menu. Now, if you haven't already added friends... That can be done by coming here to the second tab, typing in their UID, searching for the person, and then requesting that way. Once you've made your friends, though, in order to join their Serena Teapot, you have to click on their little photo icon there, the player avatar, and then click Request to Visit Serena Teapot. We're going to go join Ashley because he said earlier that he needed a boost. So we're going to request a join. It seems that he has turned on his direct join because we got right in. We didn't have to wait. And we didn't get declined either. <clears throat> Alright. Now that we're in his world, if you want to help boost somebody's crafting, you actually have to talk to their tubby. And then there's only going to be one real option. And it's going to be improve friendship to make creation quicker. This is just to boost the crafting time. You're going to knock four hours off of their crafting time. Keep in mind, you can only do this one time per day. So... I have helped actually you once today, which means I won't be able to help him anymore until tomorrow. So the next time he needed a boost, he would have to ask somebody else. So it's only one time per person, and you can only be boosted one time. You can't take a 16-hour craft and have four people boost you to make it instant. That's not a thing. You can only get boosted one time, and that one time will boost that one uh, all the crafts that you have currently crafting at the, at the moment. So now we've boosted Ashley you, and that's how you would boost somebody. We can also show off their um, their chubby, which these guys this guy shows up on, like I said, Friday, Saturday, Sunday. So if you join somebody else's world, you can check out their chubby inventory. Just open the map, find the little teapot symbol with the the brownish gold I mean, colored icon on it instead of the blue one, and then you'll be able to find their chubby. So you can go check out their inventory. So let's go look at uh, our friend Ashley's inventory right now. All right, so their chubby has, uh, they've already purchased the Sheba and the Northland Cat and purchased one of the, uh, different placeables. But as you can see, you know, since these have already been purchased, they're sold out, which means I can't purchase them. But I'm not interested in any of this stuff because it's, it's not a blueprint, right? We're only really interested in blueprints. And then we'll cover the tubby shop, all right? The realm shop. All right, so now that we've covered Adeptal Energy Maybe in full, not... talk to Tubby also to purchase new stuff. Uh, he's got a little option here, Realm Depot. This is your currency exchange shop for the uh, housing system. You're going to use the Adeptal, um, the, sorry, the Realm currency in order to purchase things here. Now, <clears throat> until your trust rank six or higher, I highly recommend that you focus on the third tab before anything else. Purchase all of the blueprints that you can possibly purchase before you bother buying anything else with Realm Currency. Because this is going to give you more trust rank because you're going to be crafting a new item for the first time. And you're also going to be gaining a, a depth of energy after you place these items. Since they're, you know, new items. 
now well adeptal energy is just earned via things being placed period right uh and the higher rarity they are the more adeptal energy you'll earn but you know you're gonna need realm currency before you can buy the big expensive stuff anyway so i would just recommend buying the cheapest stuff first it does give you less trust rank but you're gonna you know it's cheaper right um you, you get an equal amount of currency to adeptal energy no matter how you do it right because it's 80 realm currency for a green, and it's 160 for a blue. So the greens will give you 30 trust, the blues will give you 60. It works out the same no matter how you do it. <laughs> there is one other thing of note, though. There's one other thing in this shop that you would consider purchasing, in my opinion, and that would be the Vial of Adeptal Speed. Now, th this shop will refresh every 24 hours, every daily reset. So you can buy these five, you can purchase up to five vials of adeptal speed every day, and then there'll be another five in the new in the shop the next day. Now this is only 50 currency, so it, it, I would say it's worth purchasing, but uh, just kind of balance it out, right? This is gonna help you craft stuff faster every day, so I would recommend it. But if you're really focused on getting as much you know new stuff as you can, then go ahead and go for the blueprints first. <clears throat> Because that's going to help you build your trust rank faster, right? Now, another thing with these vials. Now, this is another recommendation from me, right? These vials, I would recommend you only use the vials on blue and purple, or even, I don't know if I've seen any yet, but legendary grade quality stuff. So, don't use the vials on green crafts, okay? Focus all the blues and purples. If you can, focus on all purple, right? Because uh, each t grade of item takes an additional two hours to craft. So, a... A, you know, a green grade item is only going to take 14 hours, a blue grade is going to take 16, a purple grade is going to take 18, I believe these numbers are correct, but Maybe you get the idea, right? The at the moment, <clears throat> you're going to want to use the vial to get as much bang for your buck as possible, so focus on the blues and the purples creation. with those vials. Instant crafting that stuff is going to help, you know, progress you faster, so I recommend don't just sit on the vials, though. You know, use them while you can, get that trust rank up as fast as you can. Like, my alt right now is already uh, trust rank 4. For whatever reason, my main is behind, I'm not sure. But, that's what you should do with your vials, okay? Um, excuse me, sorry. One last thing that we need to cover while inside our teapot is the adventure... It's it's like an adventure journal, but it's added and it only covers the uh, adeptal realm. Okay, it's this icon here in the top right, <clears throat> and it's like a teapot. All right, first off, you're gonna see is, is you're gonna see round one. You're gonna want to try to focus on doing each of these various tasks and um, just don't ignore this, okay? Because this is gonna give you a lot of uh, new blueprints and recipes and new placeables. So you should always pay attention to this and this will kind of give you a guideline to follow for like what you should be aiming for next. So we're done inside the world. We've kind of showed off everything that you can do here. Now, uh, in order to leave your world, there's multiple ways you can do it. You can open up your map and then click this icon down here and go back to Tavot and then teleport anywhere in Tavot you're trying to go. Okay, that's one way. Or if you just want to be where you were when you entered, you would just open up your bag Use the teapot again, place it, and then use. And it'll just put you back right where you left. But we're going to go out and we are going to show off uh, how to farm wood. I've got a video on the wood, by the way. I should, I'll, have, I'll have that linked down below, the YouTube video that I'm making right now. But um, I have done a video that covered all the seven types of wood and where to find you know, good locations for that. But we've learned some things since then, too. Um, now, there's some new knowledge out there that you only have to hit 10 trees, and then the count, uh, then you'll be able to hit the same trees again. So if you can find 10 trees in, you know, close proximity, you just make a, you know, a circuit. You hit all those 10 trees, and then it should reset, and then you go back and hit that first tree, rinse, repeat. Just farm as much as you need, and you can do it in a small area. Now, we're about to test this theory, because I, ha I only just learned this. My favorite character thus far for doing this has been the Traveler. Um, I've noticed with Zongli, it takes him like four or five attacks before he gets all three wood out of a tree. But for the Traveler, it's just three sword swings, and they're relatively fast. I have tried with Jean, but with Jean, it takes like four because her attacks are a little bit quicker. There's like a timing thing. Now, also Rosaria, she can do it in, uh, in three swings. I like Rosaria. Rosaria has wide swinging attacks that hit pretty easily.
All right, so we're we're gonna swing back around and hit that first tree we hit earlier. This music makes makes me feel like I'm in combat or something. All right, now we're gonna go back to the first trees we hit, and we're gonna test this theory out and see if we actually get wood again. It looks like we do. All right, so I'm gonna say that this uh, theory with the ten trees and then it resets is confirmed. You can stay in one small area and hit the same ten trees and get as much wood as you need. So keep that in mind. Find some good find good areas. I've got a video for that. I'll link it down in the script description. But find a good area that you like. Hit the trees that you need and just get in there, right? You, you, you can stick with the same 10 trees and just run a circuit. Hey guys, this is Editing Say, and I had to come in here and add some footage because uh, when I originally recorded this, apparently it cut off while using the uh, NVIDIA share program. So some of my footage got cut off and I'm gonna have to make a part two and re-record some stuff. So this is gonna be the end of part one. Thank you for watching and uh, be sure to hit that like and subscribe for me. See you next time.